What's the biggest obstacle you faced in your life so far that you were able to overcome and how'd you do it? I mean, that would be the biggest, the biggest obstacle. I would probably say when I was running my trucking company. And what do you mean by that? I mean, just the whole process. I mean, just the whole process of starting a company is is not as easy as everybody thinks. And then, not only that, during that situation, during me working, and actually when I had it a flow of making good money. I ended up having a stroke, which they said I had like 20% chance to make it. It was just a lot going on. My, my sister flew back in from Cali. It was just, I woke up and I had all my childhood friends, family I hadn't seen in years. And I, I didn't even think it was a stroke. I actually thought it was Percocets that I took for a pain that I had from my leg. And I thought it was because, you know, when you're driving, you're trying to get that money. So you you saying, I wouldn't I wouldn't stop. They say you're supposed to stop and walk and do all that, but I'm trying to get it. So, I, I mean, that, that could have been it. That's what I thought the pain was. So I really just, I went to, to the urgent care. They gave me Percocets and steroids. At first, I thought it helped, but three days later, uh, I don't know. I can't even remember if it was three or five, but a couple of days later, I was actually on the way to pick up my girl. I was on the way to pick up my girl, and I went to the Shell gas station to put gas. And the people at the gas station didn't want me to drive away. And I'm like, man, y'all tripping. I'm, th I'm just thinking I'm off the, off the perks. I'm, I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm good though, you feel me? And they're like, man, listen. They don't want. They don't. They didn't want to let me drive. So, I just. I guess I passed out and I woke up. I had the ambulance in front of me. I had like firefighters there. It was a bunch of people in front of me. I didn't even really know what was going on. I was trying to give them information again. Apparently, I passed out again, and I woke up. And that's when they were telling me I had a stroke, and I'm just like, nah, nah, I don't, you know. What I mean? I was just. I thought I OD'd or something. And they're like, nah, you had a stroke. And I was like, man, I'm too young for that, you feel me? But, you know, it could have been, you know, the living, the the drugs, the trucking. It could have been a combination of everything. I just don't know. The doctors didn't even really know. And then, couldn't find out, it was I had a hole in my heart that apparently we all born with, but it's supposed to close. Mine never closed. And what makes the story even more crazy, through this whole time, three days before my stroke, my brother went into the hospital and he was getting, I thought, it, we thought it was the trucking incident too because his leg was swollen and all type of things was going on and then they had to amputate it and it was just, so we just thought a whole bunch of things. We thought we had like woo going on in our family, so. It was just crazy because we're the two youngest, so it just it was just a crazy time for me. And, and, go ahead. And we both came out of our situation, and we started a trucking company together, and and we we don't drive no more, and we just run it. So I feel like that's that was probably the biggest obstacle that I actually overcame. Now, there are several elements of this description you just mentioned uh, want to follow through here with. Okay, can you explain to people watching this interview that's heard the phrase stroke but doesn't exactly know what it means? From my understanding, stroke is one, I think, like blood goes to your brain. And the reason it was able to do that, because I had the hole in my heart. I, apparently it wouldn't travel, be able to even travel that far if my hole was closed. 
and I went 30 years with no insurance. So <laughs> finally, when they put insurance, and finally, I just got insurance with the whole Obamacare. And, you know, that helped me out. And they, they closed they closed it, so I, I'm good now. They closed your, your hole in your heart. Yeah. And what age was this when the stroke actually took place? I was 30. Actually, it was like a week before my 30th birthday. And when it comes to your health and your health history, could this have been preventable in retrospect? Them finding out this hole never closed at some point in your life, could that have been found or sought at some point before you even hit 30? I mean, possibly if I had insurance, they, they care a lot more. That's a fact. Because <laughs> I've I seen, I seen the difference. I definitely seen the difference, but I mean it's something that they probably would have to check for. But I mean, you know, like listen, I'm a big boy. I like to eat good, so I mean, theoretically, that could have played a factor. The smoking could have played a factor, but really, they said when they checked my levels or anything, I didn't have diabetes, I didn't have high blood pressure, I didn't have nothing. So it was the the main thing they said it was from from the heart and the heart. You also mentioned a leg issue that you had, that you were suffering in the midst before all of this took place. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, when I was younger, I had a motorcycle accident where, you know, I had metal pins in my leg. I got hit by a car, a car ran a stop sign. And you know, I had to get airlifted. I was in a wheelchair. I mean, they told me I was gonna, might not walk for about a year, but I was determined to walk. I walked in like four months. Well, I was walking with the cane. I had the metal pins looking crazy. I was pulling up places. I didn't really care. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was because of that, because they told me sometimes after after 10 years, you got to get your pins changed or something like that. So I was thinking it was that. But I, I really don't even know what it was. What age did the uh, motorcycle incident take place in your life? I was 18. When it comes to the leg, has that fully healed? Yeah. When it comes to the metal pins, now that you have insurance, is that something you ever looked into if you need to have that changed out or need an update on that whole situation or scenario there? I mean, honestly, I haven't checked because when I got my insurance, I was just focused on the whole stroke situation. But, I mean, I should check on that. Now, you got insurance after you had the stroke, after the hole in the heart was fixed, or yeah. before? No, I got insurance after the stroke. Okay. And after the hole in the heart was fixed as well? Yeah. Okay. Because you got insurance after those incidents, did you have to come out of pocket and pay in full for those incidents? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my hospital bills is up the roof, but... I mean, I ain't paying a dollar, but, you know, I'm pretty sure it's stacked up somewhere. They're they going to come collect, but I holler at them. I holler at them. They'll, they'll, they'll get there. They'll get there. I got them. Now, when you were a truck driver, was that the right phrase for that, or was it called something specific that you were doing? at that time in your life? Well, I was a car hauler. Like, I was um, transporting cars from, like, dealer to dealer, or if someone buys a car from somewhere, you know, you pick it up and deliver. So, you know, you get paid by by per car. I mean, you know, there's when it comes to trucking, there's so many different types of trucking. And um, car hauling actually pays probably the highest, you know, so, yeah, I was doing that. And I'm into cars, you know, so just felt like it made sense, but it's a lot of liability. You know, as a business owner, you, you, don't, you don't think about that. You just think about, oh yeah, I'm being, I'm being these whips. And, nah, it don't work like that. Them whips cost. Every every whip is worth 100,000. So you got seven of them things, that's 700,000 in your truck. So like that is, is real. As a business owner, you understand, you look at things different. 
Now, how long were you in the trucking and in, uh, trucking industry for before the stroke took place? Um. Well, I was driving for about two years before I started my company, and then um, I think I was rolling about like two years, maybe three. So, I'll say I was driving trucks about four or five years. Four or five years, two of which was for someone yeah, else. Yeah, other companies. And then three was for you. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when you start a trucking company with your brother, was that part of that five-year scenario or was that after? No, that was after. Okay. When it comes to that five years of trucking, aside from car hauling, was there any other type of trucking you were doing? I mean, when I was working, not not my own company. My own company was just cars, but okay. I've worked doing everything for other companies. Are you able to describe what type of trucking you were doing? I've done reefer, which is like refrigerated goods. I've done dry van, which is anything that could go in the back of a truck. I've done flatbed, which is flatbed. Um, that's really most of them. But there's a couple other stuff like. No long hauls, but I've never really done those, like, the when you see them long poles that be extended everywhere, you need, like, extra permits for that. You need gas. Gas is another one. You need certain permits for that. Never really got into those, but I've done everything else. When it comes to the business with you and your brother, what type of trucking are you two doing at this point? Just regular goods. It just made more sense. Like, cars is a lot of liability. I mean, I might get back into it. Because, you know, I, my love of cars, but, I mean, it just made more sense to do regular trucking at the moment. How does the money compare when you were driving for someone else for two years, driving for yourself for three years, and then now you and your brother don't drive, but you run a company, a trucking company? I mean, I mean, it depends. I mean, because when you're driving... You're making all the money. You're making driver money, and you're making business money. So yeah, you make good money, but like you're not really you. It's, you're putting too much time. Like you're being on the road twenty four seven. I got, I'm trying to worry about getting another truck, getting another truck. Four or five. Once you got four or five trucks, you're making more money than you was driving. So that's what I'm focused on more now. So that, that's what makes sense. Care to share how many trucks you and your brother have? Right now, three. And what's the goal? A hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Now, there, there's a couple things I want to get your opinion on here. Pausing to move to another set of questions. When it comes to your health, the leg incident, the stroke, health insurance, what did that entire experience teach you? What did you learn from all of that if you haven't mentioned it yet in this interview? Get you some money. <laughs> Get you some money. <laughs> like, as simple as that. Like, because without that insurance, they'd be looking at you crazy. They be really looking at you crazy. If you could turn back the hands of time, would you have done anything different in regards to your health? Nah, I mean, yeah, all of my life experiences made me who I am today. Like, I really feel like I'm unstoppable right now. The, to the point, like, I done been through everything, so it's... There's nothing nobody could tell me. Like I feel, I feel good. I look good. So like, you know, the things I've been through, it was hard, but I made it through. What do you want people watching this interview to know about health, if anything? I I say, take care of yourself where you feel good. Like forget how everybody looks at you and perception. Like, if you, if you could move and feel good, because, like, yeah, there's been times where I've gotten so big where I can't even move. Like, right now I could play ball for an hour. What's good? Like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? But there's times, you know, I've been late. But if you feel good with yourself, you know, I feel like live life, man. Don't worry about, you know, how, how you look, trying to look like somebody in a magazine. Like, 
I, I'm good with myself, so. And that's what I tell everybody. If you feel good with yourself, if you know you want to lift 100 pounds and you can lift it good, don't worry about the other guy lifting 350. You know what I'm saying? If that's what's the goal you wanted, get there. After you overcame the stroke, the hole in, in your heart uh, procedure, and was that just one surgery that took place for that? Well, well, for the to close it, yes. yeah, yeah, it was just one surgery. Okay. It's not even. I don't even know if it's. I think it's more like a procedure because I wasn't asleep for it. Okay. Um. But ever since the hole in the heart, the stroke, uh, did that cause any weight loss? No. Well, I, the reason why I say to, you know, love yourself because I've lost weight so many times trying to be this, trying to have a six pack. And yeah, after the stroke, I lost weight because, you know, I felt like, I felt like maybe my weight had something to do with the stroke. So I got, I dropped probably about 80 pounds. Like I dropped weight, like anything I put my mind to, I'm gonna do it. Like I can show you pictures right now of me like this, but it's like, I used to do it for other people. I was trying to get a six pack like, I don't really care. Like, I'm good with myself. So it's like, I don't really do it for that. But I had nothing really to do with the stroke. It was me dieting, me working out. And yeah, I lost weight. But it's like, I realized I'm doing it for other people. I eat what I want to do. you know. But I still, I play soccer. I play basketball, things that I enjoy. You know, I might hit the gym with one of my homeboys one time. But I do it because that's what I want to do, not because I'm trying to look good for somebody. Are you happy with the weight you're at now? I'm great with it. And with that 80 pound loss, have you gained any of it back or I you... gained all of it back. Oh. <laughs> like the so yeah, I was a lot I was a lot slimmer. But um I I'm I'm, I'm good with myself. Like, you know, like I said, I've been bigger where I couldn't even move. I didn't want to get out of bed, but right now I could play ball, I could do whatever I need to do. I, I just rocked the stage at Nomi Fest. And so it's like and I'm running around the stage like like it's nothing. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone, but generally speaking, let's say somebody's watching this interview and they've just become a victim of a stroke. Anything you would say to them? I mean, everybody's health different, so they got to look at their body, talk to the doctor, see what's going on with them. Because, you know, everybody's situation is different. They might have high, high blood pressure. They might have diabetes. So you got to take care of that. I took care of whatever whatever the doctor told me to do. I followed the instructions to the T. So yeah, make sure you make sure you know your body, check your body, and, and get to where you need to be at. Anything else you want to mention about health or question you weren't <coughs> asked? People want to know about it. About health? Yeah. Other than what you've already said thus far. I mean, most people want to know diet tips, and I definitely could give that. I tell you, eat small portions throughout the day. Every a lot of people just go throughout the day without eating and they eat one big meal. That's very bad for you. Just eat small portions throughout the day. Anything else on this subject? No. Nah.